Hi, my name is Julia Silge and I am a data scientist and software engineer at Posit, formerly our studio. And today in this screencast, we are going to talk about how to deploy a model trained in R on AWS SageMaker. Um, we're going to use Vetiver to do this, and the particular model we're going to train is um, really similar to um, models that you've seen if you're a Tidy Models user in our book, Tidy Modeling with R. What we're really going to focus on is you've trained a model. How do you get that model from the computational environment where you trained it into the SageMaker infrastructure so that you have a model endpoint, a SageMaker model endpoint that you can then use in your organization. As of the publication, when I am recording this and writing this, the, um, the functions for SageMaker support in uh, Vetiver are in the development version on GitHub. So you'll need to install from GitHub in order to get these, these functions and try them out. If you do try them out, um, I'm very interested in feedback. If you try them out and say what does and does not work for you, um, I would love to, um, love to, I would invite you to give it a try. Okay, here I am not working locally on my computer, but logged in to our um, demo SageMaker instance and ready to go to talk about how to deploy a model here on SageMaker using Vetiver. So let's get started first and train a model so we have something here. I am going to um, use a data set that is... Um, very, very familiar to Tidy Models us users, I bet. Um, th this is interesting. We actually have an open, um, an open issue about fixing this on SageMaker. Um, something. Uh, so anyway, we can ignore that right now. <laughs> Okay, so I am going to use Tidy Models. I'm going to use this Ames data set. If you have read. Um, Tidy modeling with R, you are very familiar with this. You have seen this one zillion times. And I'm going to use it just to train a model that you may be familiar with as a Tidy Models user. So let us take this. I am going to um, take the log of the sales price because it is log normal distributed. I am then going to... Um, Everything, some of these things are integers, and I'm going to change them to numeric because um, I'm going to use a ranger model, and it is happier if we don't have integers. So then I'm going to make um, initial, I'm going to split my data into training and testing here. Uh, I'll do it. I'm, I've got one of the pages up here. Um, from the book. So this, this, this is like very, very similar to a model that is trained in the book. Okay, we need to set a seed here for reproducibility. So I'm going to make my uh, training and testing data sets here. Let me pull off my training here, and then I will um, create my testing set here, like so. Do that if I want them to line up. Um, great, so now I have my training and my testing set. If I were to say Ames train, um, Ames test, whoops like that. So I divided it into 80% for training, 20% for test data. And then I am just going to train a basic random forest model here. So I'll say random forest, I am going to bump up the trees here. And I think the default is ranger, but I'll just make that explicit here. Ranger set mode regression because I'm predicting the price, which is a continuous variable. So this is my model specification here. And then let me make a model workflow here. So I'll say workflow. Um, so I'm going to predict the sale price. Let me get the names here. 
So I'm going to predict the sales price from the neighborhood, the gross living area. So this is like the size of it, the year built, um, the building type, type. And then latitude and longitude. So this is again exactly like um, a model that we have um, in the book. So it's a random forest model to predict the price of these houses in Ames, Iowa from the neighborhood, um, how big the house is, when it was built, is it a single family home or a condo or something like that, and then the specifics of the latitude and longitude here. So a random forest is good at fitting, at learning these kinds of, you know, complex interactions from this. So I will, let's fit it to the training data like so. Okay, let me just do that whole thing. We're fitting right now the data to the, um, the models of the data. And if I wanted to look at this, uh, it's a, now a trained workflow. It tells me information about, you know, how the model was trained and all that kind of thing. Okay. Model training. So this is, you know, I went through that really fast, but now we have a trained model that hopefully, you know, many Tidy Models users especially will have some familiarity about what it is like. And we can move on to what this demo is focusing on, which is how do you take this model right now and how can we put it into Amazon SageMaker as a model that um, we can serve and get predictions from in um, on SageMaker. So the first step is to create a deployable model object here. So what I want to do here is I am going to load the vetiver package here, and then I'm going to create a vetiver model. I am going to create a vetiver model from the thing that I have fitted, and then I'm going to give it a name. I am going to call it Ames Pricing, like this. And then, oops, I can print that out. So what I what I what happens when I do this is that the model uh, we we take the model that we just trained and we collect everything that we need to move that model into deployment at this time. So we we are collecting details about how the model was trained. We're creating details about what the um how, what are the features like? What are the names? What are the types of them? We are bundling the model, which is a way of making sure we capture the information that is needed to uh, make predictions at, at the um, after deployment. So it's it's ready to go now. So what Vetiver does is help you capture this information that you need to be able to deploy the model somewhere else, not in this environment, but somewhere else. Okay, so the next step is that I'm going to publish and version the model in an S3 bucket. So I am going to use pins here to do this. So pins works on a lot of backends like Posit Connect or Google Cloud Storage and um, S3, AWS S3 is one of the places it works. Um, I need to uh, I use an existing bucket. SageMaker, whatever, demo. So this is a bucket I made ahead of time. The um, functions and pins don't make new buckets, so you have to use a bucket that already exists. So now I am going to set up a board. It is an S3 board, and my bucket equals this bucket value that I have here. So if I set it up, you know, I can kind of look at the board, what's here. So I, I have... I put some test objects on this board before I started this screencast, and so I have some cache there of what, what's there. And now what I can do is I can vetiver pin right I, on the board my, uh, my, um, my model object. So what's happening is I am going to the, um, uh, to the S3 bucket, and it's taking my deployable model object and saving it in the S3 bucket as um, as an object there. I'm getting this, um, this prompt that tells me uh, it would be a good idea for me to write a model card um, as a process of deployment. So you can you can pop that open. It's an R, R Markdown template, and you can get going with that. Um, I am right now going to 
move on. Okay, so then to the actually deploying. So the model now object is stored in an S3 bucket. This is a binary model object. I'll need to get back out into a new place. So um, to actually deploy the model here, there's two approaches that are available in Vetiver. One of them is one single function, one single function here. So if you use this function, you pass in, you got to have a couple arguments here like, hey, where is your model object? What kind of instance type do you want to use? And then optional arguments here. This is one function that does the whole thing. In this um, screencast, I am going to walk through the, the um, functions that are kind of under the hood a little bit because so, there's three actually stages to what the Vetiver Deploy SageMaker function does. First, we need to um, build and push a Docker image to AWS ECR. The, ne the next step is to create a SageMaker model. This is like a content type in SageMaker. And then last, we need to deploy a SageMaker model endpoint. So if you have a typical use case, like a sort of very straightforward use case, you can just use this one function. I'm going to walk through what these individual functions do so that, um, you know, we can have some idea of what is actually going on um, uh, underneath. And also these functions are exported. They're for here for you to use. If you have more, um, more, a more, um, a less straightforward use case, if you need to customize things, if you need to, you know, set the PC IDs and, you know, all these kinds of things, if you have a more, more, um, if you have uh, a use case where you need to make set more things yourself. Okay, so let's go through this. So if step number one, um, we um, build the Docker container. So we are going to um, use the function, that first function, SM build. So the first thing, what I pass in here is board and name. Name equals aims pricing like this. So what it's going to return is an, is an image URI uh, here. So let me get this started. This part is not super fast. So what is happening here? We can kind of see as it logs what it is that it's doing. So the first thing it's going to do is it um, makes an rnv.lock file, as you see here. So what's happening is it's looking in the environment you're working in now and it is saying what versions of the packages will I need in, to install into the Docker container so that when the model is being served from the Docker container, uh, you know, we use exactly the same um, model or package versions that were used to um, that were used to train it. Now it's going to sit here for just a minute and, and get going, but then the logging will start again. So first it makes the rnblot log file. The other things it makes right now are a Docker file that is especially created for your model, just, you know, as lightweight as possible, and a plumber.r file, so an app file that, um, and that this plumber file is, again, especially created for your model, just exactly the way your model needs to be served. So those things are all created, those um, a little directory with all the artifacts in it that we need. And then those artifacts, what's happening is we are, um, we are going to, uh, create a Docker image from that Docker file and then store it in an AWS ECR repository. So that's what it's getting started on here. Uh, I probably, once the logging really gets going, I probably will pause because this part of the process does take a little while. Um, I'm hoping it will, uh, Show us something more interesting here in, in just a moment. Perhaps what I'll do now is I will pause the video and we'll let the model, we'll let this Docker image build and then I will come back when it is done. Okay, it's done. So uh, you can probably see there's a, there, let's scroll back up here through these logs just to give you an idea of what it was that it went through there. Oh, 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 I just keep going all the way to the top. Okay, so this is some of the 
Docker log, some of the AWS and the Docker log. So, oh my gosh, I scrolled all the way up and it's not done. That's okay. You get the idea. The Docker, it pulled the Docker image, the base, the base Docker image, which is um, from the Rocker organization. Then it, it's like, okay, we're going to install packages from the package manager. And then it goes through installing everything and creating the Docker container it installs 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 we'll just scroll through so you can see kind of all the stuff that happens lots of installation lots of installation more installation <laughs> and then okay then we get here so then this is the end of the docker um container here and then it is it built it success Hooray, success. And then it pushes the Docker image to um, uh, the right place for me and my account. There we go. Okay. And so what it returns is the location of this Docker container. So here is here is where it is for, for me. This obviously will be diff different for you. Okay. So that's step one. It is a long step. That's That's probably the most intense step. The next step, if we remember is to create the model here. So we'll use um, Vetiver Super, uh, Sage Maker model. And here we just pass in the URI. It says, okay, make a model, set up a model from this image that is was built and then stored in um, ECR here. This part, is fast. Okay, so this part went really fast and it it returns a sort of like automatically generated model name. So this is a SageMaker model, which is like a content type of thing you can have on SageMaker. And then the last thing we're going to do is set up the endpoint here. So SageMaker endpoint. And so here we pass in the model name. And the other thing that I have to pass in is the instance type. Um, do I remember what the instance types are? Oh yeah, no, I've already still got it up. So instance type. So we can, um, where did it go? Instance type. There's like, um, we can look them up if we need to, to know where to um, get them here. So let me, oh yeah, I've got this. So it's, um, I'm gonna, whoops, here. I will... Um, pick like a medium sized one here. And what this is going to return is my new endpoint here. Now, um, this again um, takes a little while. So if I get started on this, it is going to start creating. And we've got this little um, time now where we are going to wait for the endpoint actually to come up. So the um, there is an argument in here sage maker endpoint wait and wait if you set wait equals false it returns to your r session immediately but just be aware that the model endpoint will not actually be up then it takes a little while to actually come up so again i am gonna pause the video because not much is going on at this point and um, i will come back when the endpoint has been deployed okay it finished so what this object is, is the SageMaker model endpoint that is now um, now up and ready for prediction. And we can actually go and look at it, which is kind of fun. So here I am at on the home page. And if I go down to deployments here and endpoints, my, let's reload this. And see what we've got. Okay, and here is my new model right here. So here you can see a bunch of other models I've created over the process of, um, you know, working on this, uh, the, working on these features. But this is the one one minute ago is the one that we just made. So if we click on it, you know, we there's all the normal SageMaker stuff here, like its settings, but we can actually test it here. So we, what we would need to put here for um, for the uh, in the JSON would be some of the um, the test data. Um, so let's take the aims test. Let's like take the first one, and then what I want, I just want the predictors. Let me remind myself what those are. 
So neighborhood, the living area, year, built, building type, latitude, longitude, like that. So I just need these. And then if I make it into JSON, JSON to JSON, like this, this is what I would want to put in there. So let me take this and go over here and paste it in. And I can um, send the request and then I get back the predicted. So this is the predicted price on the, the log scale here. And I can do more in here if I want. So let's say, you know, like this house is this big, but let's say I have um, another, like uh, I want to get predictions for more than one thing at a time here. And I can, um, let's say what this other house is bigger and it's newer and so forth. So now I test, and so now I get, I would get back all the predictions like this in JSON. So here's how it goes in, here's how it comes out. Okay, so this, but this is just like testing, you know, test and validate your model, right? It does show that it's up, um, but I, um, may want to get to these from R. So what I can do to make a predictions from my deployed endpoint from R is to um, use a, a predict method. So let's get some new um, data. So aims test. Um, so let's say I'm going to, let's just say I get 50 of them here. And then what I would do is I would say predict on this endpoint object that I have with this new data, so like this. So I, um, uh, so super fast, right? So what we're doing is we're calling, we're calling this endpoint from R, taking some data, predicting it. And if I do it again, I'll get like different, different um, houses that get sent in. And so they um, will get different predictions out. So um, uh, model endpoints that are served from SageMaker can be interacted with in many ways from via curl, from Python, but also from R, like this. All right, we did it. I want to emphasize that there's one function, Vetiver Deploy SageMaker, which is a good fit for most straightforward use cases. During the um, screencast, I decided to walk through the three underlying steps of what Vetiver Deploy SageMaker does so that you can, you know, learn a little bit about what is this process like. Um, it, you know, it does take a little while for some of these things to happen and to finish. So be aware of that. And again, the, um, the functions for the SageMaker support in Vetiver are currently in the development or um, version on GitHub. So you'll need to install from there to try this out. And I hope that you try it out if you are in an organization that uses SageMaker. And if something goes wrong, please let me know because um, we would love to get more feedback on this before we release it to CRAN. I hope this was helpful and I'll see you next time.